<laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to join the lecture series uh, organized by Contemporary China Research Cluster. And today we are very honored to have Professor Mark Wong with us. He is the director of the Center for Contemporary, Contemporary Chinese Study at the University of Melbourne. He is a developed development geographer uh, in the School of Geography, Earth and Atmospheric Sciences. Um, Professor Wong's recent research project include Chinese infrastructure investment in um, Southeast China, including Indonesia, and the poverty alleviation resettlement, land acquisition, and South to North water diversion issues in China. Um, Professor Wang has already published extensively in this topics, and he received Australian International Medal in 2018. Um, today, he's going to share with us his uh, critical thinking and observation in uh, the river ship system. Um, and um, without further ado, over to you, Professor Wang. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me share my screen. And uh, yeah. Okay. Right, okay. Automation. Great. Okay. Um First of all, let me th uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is a great opportunity for me to uh, give the talk uh, this, uh, uh, here. I'm very delighted and honored to be invited to speak to you this afternoon on the water governance issues in China. And uh, for contemporary Chinese study, I think Hong Kong U has been I used to joke with George Ling and you know, say, oh, you are the frontier person. You know, you guys really, physically and culturally proximity to China, you can do the field work to, in mainland China weekend. We had to travel several hours, even the time difference, three hours, but uh, you know, that's the number one privilege you have. You know. Secondly, you guys critically engage your research work about contemporary China issues with, I think, the very strong cultural awareness the Diliu Gan, the six senses, you know, gut feeling about China, the so interpretation by the Hong Kong scholar about contemporary China is always, you know, attract our attention. So, oh, this is a great understanding, you know, that's wonderful. I, I, I feel like an a honor to be here. Today, I want to share a, a, some preliminary thoughts about the new development about China's water governance, we call a river chief system, Zhe. This is a part of my interest, research interest related to another ongoing research project, which is a South to North Water Diversion Project. Uh, I have been uh, done that for the last five years. Okay. Uh, water, uh, everybody knows, water is essential to all the civilizations. As uh, 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 Philip Bowles and in a book called Water Kingdom uh, and, uh, argued in his book, uh, in China, the relationship between culture, philosophy, state of formation, and hydrology is uniquely close. In fact, in the 1950s, the uh, uh, scholars already raised the issues about this uh, such closer relationship between water governance and the nature of a Chinese state in a famous book, Oriental Despotism, you know, a comparative study of total power. So managing China's water, huge, uh, troublesome rivers and a securing water supply has been the job for the you know, empires for early times. So one school of Chinese history even argues that very shape and the nature of Chinese state was determined by the need for water control project, dam, levee, canal, and diversions. 
So this is the issues about such water and water governance importance in China. And quite interestingly, recently, uh, a professor Jia from Beijing, Di Li Su, uh, okay, uh, from Chinese Academy of Science and Geography Research Institute in Beijing, reviewed China's water governance history and a really interesting review about the dynamic change of water governance over time. Uh, flood control, the Yellow River issues, the historic uh, water transport was the historical focus in, 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 you know, in, uh, in the Forbidden City, this is the big, it was a big topic. During the Mao's period of time, engineering owner oriented the water governance system, irrigation, flood control, water supply, basically under Mao, which is a quite interesting development. And the Deng Xiaoping and the post Deng Xiaoping up to 2001, according to his work, continue, I guess, a focus on engineering solution, project engineering projects, Rigorio Dam, and a proposal South North Water Diversion Project. Meanwhile, water pricing was introduced uh, from 20, 2000 to uh, 2002 to 2016, water price trade, a water right trade, and a three red line was introduced. Uh, uh, three red line referred to something we give a little bit more detail. And as, when Xi Jinping came to power since 16, 2016, river chief system, He Zhang Zidu, according to Jia, Professor Jia and his co-authors, and believe this is the single most important water governance reform developed in China. And the table here summarized some of the key issues, key, key points during a different period of time. So why has the river chief system been viewed as the single most important water governance measure since 2016? I think that uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese Communist Party has done, I guess, a lot of work. So its water is so far so okay to accommodate for its rapid economic social change or development. Uh, China is it's quite an awkward situation because China supplies food for over 20% of world population using only 7% of the world arable land. Everybody know that. And the 6% of world freshwater resources. So broadly speaking, China, the water crisis have, can be described, like I said, broadly, three keywords. The first keywords, too much. Too much means the map here demonstrate, you know, flood disaster frequency, historically Yellow River and, and other river as well. But uh, since 1949, the Yellow River flooding is not a big issue, but South China and other part of China is issue. Flood disaster management is issues for always all those issues. And the second keywords I was too little. This is easy to understand as uh, this map demonstrate water stress index in China. I want you to pay attention particularly to the North China play this part of China. Okay, somewhere between Beijing, Shanghai, this North China region with one of the highest water stress region. Of course, the Northwest China, some part of Northwest China have a high uh, index, but the North China have a high index. Uh, that's really quite in, in, in important issues. Uh, that's the second keywords related to the water crisis. The third one, which is too dirty, too dirty, also easy to understand. China has a four decades of industrialization, great but it has left China's water resources in uh, polar you know, conditions. So the third key through 30 represents something. Uh, China's first national water census revealed that more than 28,000 28, river just disappeared. You know, just under half has disappeared in the past 20 years. Some of the small river creeks just disappeared after remaining the, all the remaining water river of the North China are suffering from extraction. Groundwater is both polluted and depleted. A groundwater level report had a lot by, by the scholars, including some excellent work by the uh, Chinese scholars. It had been claimed the South to North Water Diversion Project along the Eastern Road and Middle Road have a 
have a kind of restore some of the groundwater level in the North China region. That's quite interesting development need to further discussion uh, study. And other data says 300 million people have no access to safe drinking water. That's from different sources. And a, a government monitor the river, about 43% of government monitor river has polluted as this map demonstrate this uh, pollution or certain Saxon river have a series of pollution. That's uh, the third keywords to help us to understand why the river, <coughs> excuse me, a uh, river chief system come from. I guess China has done a lot, okay? So China has done a lot about to secure its water supply, water governance. I guess the first the symbolic of important development is 1988, China have a Suifa, water law. Since the water law introduction in 1988, there are several other laws related to water pollution issues, seriously using the uh, uh, water uh, law system. Another very important issue is three red lines that were introduced in 2021, which three red line represents. It's kind of a strategic water resources management plan set by the central government. Basically, number one red line is total water use have a target. Either it's a 67 standard uh, uh, E, uh, don't worry, the billion, 607. 70 billion cubic meter a year, that's the total use, or water use efficiency. And the third one's water pollution should be restricted to a certain level. The three red lines, the toughest water resource management target and policy, uh, some scholar call this. Okay, and uh, but it's very difficult to keep this red line, you know, it's like realize uh, and these three red lines, not cross the red lines. It's difficult because China's water crisis is real and total available water or per capita water resource is very limited. I guess uh, to understand uh, the geography, we always pay attention where, you know, the spatial issues. Thirst in China, not necessarily everywhere, but uh, particularly it, we should pay attention to North China which the, this map demonstrate, you know, uh, water stress in Beijing and, and the North China plant regions, high depressed, uh, high uh, water stress area. And look at this map, demonstrate the green area, which is the irrigation percentage or ratio irrigation area in North China plants, highest in China of over 40%. So the irrigation agriculture use water is quite high here. So water stress plus high irrigation demand make North China uh, uh, the thirsty region in China. In fact, the water stress, in, the, uh, in, 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 in fact, the Chinese water security, uh, 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 okay, uh, call a water security grid, San Zhong Si Heng, uh, so San Heng, no, San Zhong Si Heng, sorry, I think it should be San Zhong Si which means uh, Yellow River is one, horizontal, Huai He is another one, uh, Hai He is another one, Yangtze River is another one, sorry, four Heng, San Si Heng, San Zhong, sorry, I got it wrong. And the three vertical is a three diversion route along Eastern Road, South North World Diversion, Middle Road from Danjianko all the way gravity flow to Beijing. And, and these two completed, the Eastern Road still in the proposal stage. The map, this is, this is the sort of a si, si hang, san zhong, sui wang, security grid. Actually, you can tell nothing to do with the Yipur River or Heilongjiang, no, not other part of rich China, but a North China plan be centered as a, a security grid system. This map I use is for my another paper, which is a discussion about the proposal or semi-official about the Red Flag River and try to discuss what's the impact on the river uh, water security grid, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, so uh, uh, the key point is North China, uh, plan, North China region has been centered for water security issues. And uh, 
And uh, kind of the literature about this understanding uh, about, so about water governance is what's wrong. Uh, uh, I guess we know that well. Jiu night dragging, managing, running in the water, tiao tiao kuai kuai. Uh, uh, so many research have done that and fragmented uh, authoritarianism. And, and, um, and some scholars, uh, including recent work by Jia and Li, uh, uh, overlapping function between the Minister of Water Resources and the Minister of Ecological Environment in terms of water resource protection or water pollution prevention, or overlapping between water, Minister of Water Resources and Minister of Natural Resources in terms of groundwater management, or uh, et cetera, et cetera. So also it could be found a dispute between different of uh, administrative jurisdictions, river basin commission, like a Yangtze River uh, Water Com Commission and, and the central government and provincial minister, ministry or provincial municipal prefecture county level in relation to both water quantity or water quality. Another reason is that we know that is that the water pollution issues I call a local interest, local GDP interest. Of course, some you zheng ce, xia you dui ce, those above have a policy, while those below have their uh, their own countermeasure. You know, and that sort of stuff is common understanding. So the state land or the control and command and control model or policy process is then for believe be less effective than expected in addressing this uh, environmental crisis in China. Uh, our our uh, team, a research team also published paper it argue water issue in China is not a be engineering solution dominant and not be supply oriented emphasize need water will provide the water. That's just one side of the story. The demanding side is, is a big issues we call a sustainability transfer project cannot meet China's water needs. This, this paper had been argued uh, you know, by our, our Chinese colleagues and, and quite an interesting debate about that issue. Anyway, and uh, the other thing is this, uh, the river system actually is part of a kind of, I would say the series of uh, tough policy or actions by the Chinese central government. First one, I guess, the important action is so-called war or water pollution and other pollution in 2014. Uh, and the premier declared war on water pollution. There is a Sui Shitiao water camp plan 2015. Here have a detail, the central government says Sui Wuran Fang Zi Xing Dong Ji Hua. Sorry, I just sometimes using Chinese. I uh, maybe quicker, faster, you know, and just try to target everything's about water pollution and eco 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 ecological protection. And then it's the next year, 2016, introduced the river chief system. River chief system was not new. Uh, I introduced in Wuxi in uh, 2017 or 20, uh, 20, no, 27, 28, long time ago, but central government uh, uh, like this idea, adopt this policy and nationwide policy. Basically, the river chiefs have six major tasks. First one, three red line. Keep the three red line, protect the water resources. Second one, prevent the illegal sand mining or other illegal activity in the river, in the river channel or so say with the water body. And a third is the water pollution. My understanding uh, uh, is the pollution is the number one. The other things are also important. Anyway, so the system had been uh, uh, established. And uh, the number one top official generally is the party secretary of the region uh, will be the, uh, will be the uh, uh, river chief, He Zhang. Uh, we agree that the uh, most important development here is the, uh, the water is the river chief system. Okay, why am my computer stuck? Well, why, why am I? Hey, what I'm doing? Oh, here we go. Okay, the existing literature about the river chief system generally, is, I guess, generally is, is about general description about this breakthroughs. This is a good idea, rationale, institutional logic, wonderful work, explain internal how things work better, or the overall water quality improvement outcome oriented, that's true. 
And a relevant, good, a really good study, I guess, by the few scholar on my, my, I found is by Chang and Hong. They using Kongming case studies and, uh, to check the empowered river chief uh, by the process so-called hierarchization through the participation. And, and this is a very relevant work uh, uh, to coordinate this, uh, uh, subordinate the officials and the resources. Xun also applied vertical holder rental framework, study the river chief system impact on government administration, highlight the river chief system improved the vertical management stress by combining position authority and organization authority. I, my, my reading is the gap is emphasize too much about the government side, internal administration, less uh, uh, about whether the other stakeholders, how the river chief system work at the ground level, in the ground level. What approach do the local river chief apply to address the river water management issues? I guess that's something uh, I need, I need some ground level, some sort of discussion or research. My presentation is based on some uh, preliminary work. Uh, two of my former student, uh, master coursework student, did project in one in, uh, in Guangdong, small case study, and the other one in, in uh, 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 Jiangsu, uh, Hongzhe, Hongzhe Lake region. And uh, one of our students continue the PhD, will work, continue working on this. This is a, a preliminary research. And about a uh, case study Wuhan, which is more, more referred to this non-river Mingjin Hezhou issue, which we, I cannot do the field work because COVID-19 travel restriction since 2020 enable us to do any field work. So some of the work conducted before 2020, here uh, has some uh, case study, real case based on some real study. So our question is quite straightforward. Does it work? How does it work? And any opportunity uh, for or challenges to China's river water environment government issues? Chinese call it 合长字, 合长字, which the 合长字 make a river management or governance longer term, you know, uh, sustainable rather than just temporary solution. Okay, so the, first let me explain the scope of river chief. Uh, China have a world the largest river chief team over total, I guess, the, from a provincial, prefecture, county, township level, the four level uh, uh, government, uh, there are about 320 river chiefs estimated. At the least the provincial, prefecture, county level river chief, each river chief have a office, have a two assistants, He Zhang Zhu Li, Ye Wu He Zhang, and Xing Zheng He Zhang Zhu Li, you know, assistant, two assistants. So we estimated maybe another 600 river chief assistants. And there are 740 starting river chief at village or equivalent level. So ground level is huge. So put together, this is a million people officially registered as a river chief. They are official river chief. They are looking after local, their river, uh, the river section in that jurisdiction area is their full responsibility. And on average, Every river chief look after about 400 meter length of river. That's in total. However, not necessarily every every river chief only look after 400 meters. Some of the river chief look much longer. And the second point is the oh inspection system is quite amazing. They uh, they set up an inspection system uh, across the region. And other region, other person could be a university a professor or could be a government official from another region come to your jurisdiction area do the river quality inspection. And also the river chief system and uh, here uh, everywhere you can see this public board demonstrate who are the river chief, how long the river, 
what sort of aware, what number you should call, what's the responsibility of the river chief. Uh, for this one, and demonstrate interesting, if you can read Chinese, sorry, I did not translate all into English, but I just copied this one. It's Hunan's case. Uh, and indicate Xianji uh, Hezhong, Deng Anhua, which is Guanji Juzhang. I just wonder what's wrong because the police should be the uh, party secretary. When I check the case case of that province, uh, that county, actually the party secretary was Zhong Hezhong. Uh, he is the Hezhong. The uh, 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 public security head uh, as, as, a, as a county level river chief. I guess this is, I will explain this. The river chief appoint so many other uh, sort of a senior people, including public security head to be the river chief support of the river management. Anyway, so it's quite a clearly and a demonstrated. I found all this uh, public uh, notice board in China when I did in the South North Water Diversion Project field work and I draw my attention on this is a quite interesting development. Does it work? According to the Chinese uh, authorities, the data said, okay, they have a fixed uh, 180 thousands or four type of illegal cases, illegal sand mining, illegal construction, illegal occupied area along the waterway or rubbish dumping or something like that. Uh, Seven million times the river inspection by the river chief or river chief assistants. It used to have zero inspection. Who care? River is nothing to do with the local authority. But now river, if they have to do the ins uh, inspection. And the more important data here is quite interesting. This is related to the three red line. Water use efficiency dropped from 810 uh, cubic meter per thousand UN GDP in 2016 to 570. And river water quality uh, also uh, uh, improved. Uh, better class three or higher or better increase from two third to 83% in 2020. This is a government policy, uh, government official uh, data. Uh, we had to say, oh yeah, that's something. No. Uh, so how things work, simple, easy. If you know how the water government system work in China, previous problems, now dragon running on water uh, used to be water, uh, rivers there and all the local officials Everybody's responsible, but nobody take responsible. Now the river chief system make this, uh, uh, each section river have a, uh, a responsible official. Uh, you are the number one person of that jurisdiction area. You are the river chief. You are res fully responsible for that. So each section have a portion person responsible. That's one. More importantly, because of the river chief, official river chief, is the number one official of the region. Party Secretary Su Ji, uh, or Si Zhang, or Xian Zhang, you know, so the all the relevant the local government department will, I call it dancing to their local bosses too, you know, because the river chief is the number one, therefore the local department will cooperate. Relevant department, including related water, river management, water resource department, environmental protection or agriculture, land resources, construction, development reform commission, that's always relevant, forestry department, and a finance, financial department. All this is relevant. Of course, sometimes need other, uh, including public security, you know, sectors are related. And how does it work? Uh, uh, I just briefly, uh, based on previous uh, preliminary field work, uh, I just want to share a few things. First, our case study saw that it's quite a good system, I would say. At the least, river chiefs are, are responsible for the local water issue or river issues, but the approach commonly used are not much new. Uh, uh, the river chiefs use, uh, the one thing quite interesting is the old is old method, but uh, river chief try to using different method, different approach to fix the different case, a different problem. Uh, for the traditional, the uh, dominant way approach is the command control. So here's the type of, sorry, uh, uh, instrument, which is, uh, you know, uh, government using uh, regulation, using law, use new, uh, uh, you know, variety of, 
authorities and you know, push these uh, polluters or, or problem to, to be fixed. For example, petrochemical factory and uh, water pollution and the use of the uh, uh, protection of Huangzhe Hu like protection regulation, the uh, local authorities are uh, uh, also expect a new industry park to host the enterprise. You can move into this industry park. We have a new facility, wastewater treatment facility, uh, or force you to uh, fix the problem, give you a deadline uh, or tough fine system. All this is a traditional command and a local really control the process. And also they subsidize the for the fresh wastewater uh, treatment equipment. So kind of a cam command control instrument plus kind of subsidy uh, or penalty. Another case is illegal sand mining in Hongzhou. I mean, in most of the Chinese river, you can see this illegal sand mining. Sand mining is a world problem, worldwide problem, environmental problem. Uh, but China's construction needs, need sand dramatic, you know, the big easy money, quick money, Hongzhe who like tough law have been implemented. Penalty total call of 3 million yuan penalty applied. And, and the 22 sand mining vessels or both have been detained and, and, and really using forces to, you know, definitely stop this process. So it's a tough uh, action uh, because the river chief have a target. You had to fix this problem. Uh, however, uh, for the water or river problem issues associated or related to larger population, larger number of community or disadvantaged communities, a uh, much more soft approach was adopted. Incentive plus, I call a persuasion. Uh, for example, the powder land, or cage culture. You know, in Hongzhou, like the famous Hongzhou Dats, Dats, Wang Hongzhou Dats, Dats, here is the image, it's uh, Ba uh, Wang I mean, it's 400 yuan, nearly about, you know, uh, 10 uh, crabs uh, here. And it's quite expensive, quite important. So by in the 2018, about 400 square kilometers area in Hongzhou, or about a 20% lake area. Look, this is, you know, the green or dark green areas is areas of cage culture area. So it's all related to this uh, 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 crab, uh, uh, fence, fence crabs, you know. And uh, it's quite an important. And, and, and over 100K, 100,000 laborers, uh, uh, engage in this, you know, it's a very important part of income. However, um, the, the, uh, the, this is not good for the water quality and, and then for you have to do something. So target is that by 2025, the, the uh, area will reduce to 120 square kilometers according to the plan. They have using a soft approach uh, financial subsidy for the fishermen and uh, compensation is about 1500 yuan per mu, uh, which actually is not much compared with their income from this, uh, you know, uh, caged culture. And also every local official uh, uh, is responsible uh, to ask to look after these cases uh, 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 one by one. And uh, sorry, let me just yeah uh, and approaches of financial subsidy and local government official responsible fishermen to remove the fences how the local officials make the response uh, re responsible farmers to remove the fences, lot hidden uh, actions. Uh, we need a further uh, uh, investigation uh, story. Uh, we heard some story, uh, but interestingly is, is every local official, if you successfully make the fence removal, promote, you will get a 330 yuan bonus. Uh, but 300 yuan is not a much, 
But what that means, the local office, if you fail to get the fence removed, uh, will be issues uh, related to your, you know, uh, promotion, et cetera, et cetera. So the compensation is not a much. And this quotation from here, it's Chinese. I says, I already invested uh, about 300,000 yuan for 360 mu uh, 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 fence area. I can receive 100,000 100,000 yuan income, net income a year. Now you only compensate me 1,500 yuan per month, which is not much. Uh, fortunately, the local government authority or Hongzhou Hu or water authorities slow down the process, remove the fence process. Uh, they have a plan. Uh, some of the area, according to the scholars or the experts' suggestions, some areas are restricted, absolutely no. Some areas still allow you to do the uh, 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 cake uh, cultural farming, uh, crab farming, and uh, some uh, areas are restricted. Anyway, so the process is slowed down and, and give more time and more, man, more, you know. This is the approach towards these sort of issues. Uh, we haven't got a much detail in this case, it's a story yet. And, and the other case here related uh, uh, about us, I uh, call a softer, uh, is the Liang Chuan Zhengzi. What that means, Zhu Jia Chuan and Chen Yin Chuan, boat houses and a dining boats. Over 7,000 boat houses in Hongzhou, Hongzhou Lake, and over 20,000 people live, traditionally live in the boat houses and 49 dining boats, which is uh, for commercial. So how can you make these people off source, resettle, move to the land, you know, because boat, house, boat houses produce the pollution to the water, et cetera, et cetera. And also resettlement is again, is a top agenda. Uh, uh, it's very tough resettlement, as you know, uh, I did some work about resettlement for poverty elevation, for the dam construction. I mean, it's a quite interesting story, but here I find it's interesting because what they did is they list this as the provincial government's top agenda. Provincial leader, prefecture level leader, county leader, township leader, every level leader is responsible for these issues. It's just attention from the top to the bottom. This is a typical case. One boat, one case, one, one file system, one solution. So have to be responsible. Each case will be responsible uh, to, to certain responsible officials. And, and a subsidy is higher than other resettlement, like a 26,000 uh, UN per person, uh, compared with the poverty elevation resettlement or other resettlement for dam construction, or, you know, uh, this is much higher but much, much lower than the uh, uh, housing development related to resettlement, Tai Chien, that's a different story. Anyway, um, the, also the river chief or number one person managed to obtain the land permission for resettlement aside from the Department of Natural Resources, a free domestic, domestic water, free electricity supply for the resettled people. Uh, and, and a free pave the road to the resettle the sites. And also the river chief ban is uh, the sale of any cement boat to the fishman, no cement uh, boat to sell to anybody. And it, it, uh, you can tell, you know, one, you know, the boat people, this is the boat houses, uh, one person signed the document agreement there are at least five, six officials, local officials standing by because they are supposed to be responsible for this case one by one. It's a tough job, okay? And, and, and we, we heard some stories, successful stories from media, from the local official. Uh, they said the house is nice, great. But we also concerned about some of the age, the people, they don't have any other skill, unless fish farm, uh, farming, oh uh, no, uh, fish farming, yeah. So move to the land is impossible. So some of the very old people, older couple, they refuse to move, so we said, be resettled. And I guess a local government official, not like other settlement, resettlement program, force people to move. 
uh, they give them opportunity to few other people to allow them to uh, stay. And one of the local officials says, okay, we just wait for these people, all the boat houses generation naturally pass away. So that's just a, that's a resettle. That would be the resettlement in the future. So I guess the approach here is quite reasonable compared with a violent resettlement, Chiang Chai, you know, all that story reported by the other things. This is a quite a mild and, and a soft approach towards these issues, you know. And uh, something's new. What is something new? I think the first thing is, is the interesting is the, the wet water river chief system have an accurate of scientific data uh, collection system. This system was introduced in Wuxi by basically for river chief A, for example, the river, uh, when the river come into his or her jurisdiction area, the station one collect the river data including water quality. And there will be a station two when the river flow out of his or her jurisdiction. So the station one where station two data here is accurate scientific data collected by the up level authority by the professional staff, which is hard evidence based on that assessment evaluation It's there. So that's very new. This system will be and uh, is being uh, will be, I guess, uh, uh, implemented nationwide, and this is a quite a scientific oriented, you know, the full, you know, suite, the fu biao or station, all this is something related to uh, the river uh, data collection. Another thing is that uh, I would say the mechanism clear they river chief responsible for fully for the, their river section, pushed by the one vet vital system, so nothing in the promotion or end of year uh, uh, evaluations. If, if you fail in the river management thing, that kicked the box, the whole thing you failed. The other things I call a group punishment, promotion opportunity. Yes, if you perform well, promotion, bonus, of course, but uh, the bonus is not just for the river chief themselves if you successfully uh, uh, manage the river but all the local officials. Here is kind of a, a quote from the, uh, our quote says, direct district level river chief says, oh, the performance assessment here adopt the whole city as a one. You know, just, you know, if one, any of us fail river management, you know, this will affect the bonus award to the whole city. You know, the people working in the government sector will be, you know, we have to pay 200% attention to the pollution management. This is a quote from my students. Uh, work. Another thing is the, I would say, I, um, I found some of the media uh, report a lot, new attempts, new things they had tried to do. And uh, report like the song, I uh, like, you know, media reporters are one plus one plus one, which is offline, which is a one plus one plus three pairing system, village, three village uh, uh, head, Township uh, river chief head and a town uh, uh, and a county level uh, staff, including a uh, 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 village level, including inspector, coordinator, cleaning staff, and that's the offline. Online, which the group communication issue, WeChat, a QQ to communicate uh, about the information about the water quality issues. The other report about Da Suju, big data or internet uh, with, with the river chief systems, you know or the river chief system plus X, all this is uh, related to fitness or building, CCP building, or poverty uh, reduction or, or public awareness. All these media report or something's quite interesting, but most of them just propaganda, I would say, typical local, just, you know, you can find so many similar models, so-called model, but here they are just media report. But some things interest, some of these reporters could be interesting. Uh, uh, some of these local practice have been uh, uh, recognized by the central authority and they're implemented nationwide. And uh, some of these local practice, uh, local, local uh, attempts can be, it will be valuable for our research. Even as a propaganda, something is valuable, I think.
to understand how things work, how you make your you know, image building for the project. Another development is the Mingjian Hezhong. You got an official, you got an official river chief, number one authority on person official as a river chief. You also see the Gongwan Zhizhong, the public security uh, the head, as also a uh, uh, county level, you know, uh, river chief or river chief assistant, of course. But the river chief, official river chief themselves also uh, uh, hired a uh, new water management forces, new water governance or management forces, non-government river chief, Ming Jin He Zhong. And uh, the, the, and what the professor uh, in Wuhan, uh, as a, uh, my colleague working together, collaborated with research. And, and there are two types of Mingjie Hezhong. One is the river official river chief appointed Chie Hezhong, enterprise river chief. I uh, mean, a, a neighborhood river chief, there are so many uh, title, different title, uh, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And also official river chief also using local NGO in the case of Wuhan or Hubei, local called Aiwu Baihu, this is NGO, environmental NGO. And they provide websites uh, and uh, a call for volunteers for the Mingjie Hezhong river chief and, and, and appointed by the uh, uh, official river chief and select these people as a a uh, 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 volunteer river chief, that including retired teacher, retired uh, uh, government staff or student or et cetera. You have a variety of different categories. And the both these are Mingjian Hezhong, they don't have any salary. It's just voluntary. Uh, but the, the first type, I would say more passive. The second type, a little bit active. They're using WeChat group reporting the incidents. And they even have a kind of a brief training for the Mingjian Hezhong. Here is a photo. And here is the Mingjian Hezhong and, and, and local NGO. They have the Wuhan case to try to um, uh, promote their pro program. This is a fascinating development to me. I feel like this is a number one. Uh, I think this is not by the upper level company, but by the local top of, of, of Top person, number one or a person, promote the uh, non-government organization or volunteers, uh, give them a room for water governance. Okay, I have a research value. How the thing work? Which I need more to study. Emerging new forces and operation mechanisms issues. Official river chief actually leading and initiate the program. The Mingjie Hezhong as official river chief's tools to monitor the daily river issues. They, although they only can fix the, some of the visible problem, you know, uh, the pollution or something, not the fundamental institutional issues or other issues. And the social media actually empowered this non-government river chief, the Mingjie Hezhong, and the story tell this uh, Mingjie Hezhong using WeChat you know, exposed the each events or disaster or something, uh, get the authority or report to the official river chief or river chief office to get the job done quickly. Uh, that's a quite interesting development. And a major challenge quickly, I already got uh, you know, a few minutes left. I think China have done a lot to fix the water and scarcity problem. I think the most important institutional reform is introduced to river chiefs uh, here. And, and, and what is the major challenge here? I would say number one is He Zhang, He. When I say He, the river chief have a very little knowledge, formal training about the river, about catchment. I work, my colleague, I'm, I'm geographer in the geography, Melbourne University Geography Department. We have a three or four professors specialized in the river catchment and many physical process or catchment issues. And are we working together about the Yangtze River issues of diversity. These people study river, uh, they know the river well uh, about the river catchment, physical, ecological, all this stuff and, and, and you know, so, and if He Zhang but don't He, on the technical solutions problem, as a one of Yuan Si, 
academic uh, warning says, 不懂治河可能造成重大损失 This is report say, if you don't know the technical stuff about the river, for example, one case says, actually treatment need three million, 30 million yuan enough for the wastewater treatment. If using proper uh, treatment standard, using the gray system to, you know, using the natural system to uh, purify the water, uh, not just a purely over uh, too high uh, emission standard because the river chief doesn't know the uh, uh, technical stuff. And therefore they, they call it uh, uh, I think it's uh, so it be 100, 180 million yuan project. So it's just overspending. That's just one side of the story. I think the river chief uh, not, don't know the rivers uh, is, 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 is it be, also, I would see the river as opportunity for better integrated catchment management. So river, it's not just a river body, catchment, uh, and it's a, it's a ca integrated catchment and management, it's, it's a big topic that provide opportunity for land protection, biodiversity, ecosystem, providing service to the human society, and urban, rural, all this integrated event. It's important uh, issues, knowledge about the catchment, the, 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 all this process is very important for the top official and the river chief make a right decision for the regional development. I think that's a more broader, you know, positive side of, of, of water. Uh, a river uh, knowledge, uh, how important to this uh, 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 catchment and management is successful. You know, another challenge I would say the GDP and COD, a COD represent water quality, right? GDP look, I mean, this has been uh, issues for a long time. Now, what will river chief is asked, they are asked to, to be uh, the person look after COD water quality. However, GDP is there. Of course, always uh, interest to everybody in the region, in the, you know. So this balance, this too is quite a, a difficult. Uh, current systems force the river chief to, uh, you know, fix the water pollution problem and, and, and leave, you know, GDP and other issues. Uh, another issue which is related to the downstream, upstream, the river chief coordination between the downstream and upstream, it's quite interesting. There is some report about upstream downstream pollution. Even have a monitor data collection system, how the downstream or upstream if you generate the pollution, economic compensation to pay the downstream, who going to pay, how much to pay, all these issues, coordination, cooperation is always important. This is also back to the issue to uh, your uh, uh, and, and issues, okay, institutional barrier. Uh, how also the river chief could coordinate directly with the relevant authority, which is about the higher than this river chief jurisdiction racking. For example, if the county river chief dealing with a, a, a provincial SOE, state of enterprises, for example, or provincial minister of a tourist build a fancy tourist uh, uh, attraction or hotel, in the protected area, the river chief at the county level handle with the provincial minister level stuff, that sort of issue will be issue, big issue. And and Hezhong issues really raise issue about this, uh, how the new community participation, uh, not just uh, uh, could be uh, whether it's a full scale community participation, more broadly the NGO participation, I think it's a big issues, NGO issues, always issues, I guess, in China. Now, let me quickly conclude. Uh, sorry, this is based on partial, some sort of a results based on some of the preliminary uh, field work. Uh, we need a further uh, uh, a uh, few work, get us some more data, make this a uh, uh, paper or something uh, complete. But I just try to summarize a few points if I can. You know, I think the river chief uh, system is one of uh, Beijing, uh, China's attempt to tackle the fundamental challenges in water governance by reshaping the existing central local responsibility. Uh, basically try to increase the accountability of, of uh, authoritarianism, environmentalism, in catchment management, make the number one of uh, officials responsible for the, all the river section issues, river uh, issues in that 
in that jurisdiction area. Uh, the river chief system, I think, clarifying the responsibility, make sure the river chief is responsible. I think this is the typical another Sudi Guanli system. You know, uh, you your your area, you responsible to fix the commoning without control problem or the lack of accountability control of a local state. The mechanism is through the one vote for veto system or inspection system, which is quite interesting, or a little bit incentive or punishment for the river chief uh, based on that performance. Outcome, I would say mixed outcome. Uh, pollution, point pollution, I think generally speaking, uh, uh, reduce substantially the CODs, uh, the, the non-point of solution pollution, which is still uh, with limited, you know, because it's very difficult to, to, to get done and need a longer term. Uh, as I mentioned, the river chief knowledge about the river catchment, I think is an issue, uh, I personally think. For the further research or further, I guess, several issues I need to think about. Of, here, one geo, NGO is something because the Mingjie Hezhong issue make me thinking more. Uh, and, and, and also the, the horizontal coordination, cross border, upstream, downstream, sea, as river chief coordination, that's a more horizontal level. Vertical governance and mechanism, how make the up level river chief working with the low, lower level. Uh, that need coordination mechanism is quite interesting. Uh, finally, uh, I think the uh, it's an important issue. What is important issue is the how could the because the uh, uh, the how could the river chief system change from the rule by the individual, the one person river chief Zhengzi, uh, uh, to the governance by the law Fa Zi. Uh, I guess like China's COVID-19 uh, 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 management system is so the local official, you're absolutely responsible for this. They are responsible for this. So to make the local Chinese local officials, including poverty elevation, you know, before 2020, the battle about the poverty elevation program, local officials were fully responsible for this. Is they really have hard times, a lot, lot of work, a lot of burden, and they have to carry. So uh, I guess the system need to set up to manage the river, manage the water, I guess they need a long-term transfer from current the Zhengzi to more governance by law. Uh, how, I don't know, okay? Uh, yeah, I guess that's my, uh, uh, yeah, that's my presentation. Uh, thank you. Uh, if you want to contact me, um, this is my email. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Wong. Uh, it's very interesting and also inspirational, I will say. Um, and um, now um, it's the Q&A session. Um, any questions from our audience, you can either uh, use uh, the chat box and or you can just try to unmute yourself uh, to raise your questions. Okay, uh, <laughs> Professor Fong, please. You need to unmute yourself first. Yes, yes, Mark, it's a very interesting topic. Um, the first time I know um, systematically how um, the river have been managed in China. So one question um, I have, you haven't mentioned much, is about the financial resources to manage the river. So does it pay by the local or pay by the, the province or by the, the central? And if there are, you know, if the river issue cross the boundary of um, province or cross the boundary of county, so who are going to pay? Uh, that's a that's a million dollar question. I mean, uh, different cases have different financial flow. You know, uh, I guess the local, the river chief try to use his or her power to get a problem done, and they uh, and they they got a fine, they get a penalty, and then they also using uh, their power to mobilize the financial resources if possible uh, to get a problem fixed. Uh, including a resettlement program, for example, they have to uh, using other sources of financial to subsidize the resettlement, you know, program. Uh, each case is quite different, uh, I guess. Uh, 
but the problem, the, the thing is the local authority, local official, uh, you are the responsible, but I don't think they have a separate funding from a central government or the local government allowed to keep some financial planning. So I budget, I have a X, Y money for the river catchment and management for my river management. No, I don't think there's a separate funding there, but the system set up, you responsible, take whatever the resources you can. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, and also maybe I can, <laughs> I have a question actually. Um, um, China has long implemented a, a system that's the annual assessment of environmental quality of a particular or individual jurisdictions, for example, a city or a county or a town. And this um, result, I mean, the assessment result of their local environment will be released to the uh, media. And then actually this result will affect local officials uh, promotion uh, that's written in their um, uh, obligations or responsibilities. And I'm wondering why River uh, is separated from this overall assessment system. You know, basically the um, assessment of environmental quality should also include river quality or river um, uh, management. And um, what's the difference? Do you think it's a, <laughs> a repeat <laughs> of the same system? And uh, will it lead to any redundant administrative uh, responsibility of local officials? <laughs> uh, also, that's a quite interesting question. My understanding is the uh, river, uh, uh, the performance about the, the river quality, river management as a part of their comprehensive uh, uh, evaluation system. You, you know the, uh, uh, the internal uh, environmental uh, index that currently, I think, including river data. Uh, not all the data, not illegal sand mining list they perform, but uh, at least the key data about the river data, water quality, COD, or et cetera, uh, at least like a concrete data for this uh, uh, performance review. Uh, that's uh, the case study indicate that. Uh, I. I do have a co-authored a paper about the performance review, the cardio evaluation system that including how the environmental performance be considered. Uh, we didn't pay much attention. That's a good point. Actually, you put me thinking about further. Where are the river issues in the whole evaluation? But my understanding of the water quality, I think is a part of this uh, evaluation system. Yeah. Uh, internal evaluation system, very comprehensive. Some of the stuff is very technical. Some stuff is very, you know, oh, perform well, blah, blah, blah. You know, others, hard data. So all the data, COD from one to two, good or bad. And that kind of a, a performance review is quite clear. I think people in the audience maybe know more detail, more about this, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Hey, Professor Lin, please. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Mark, uh, I really enjoy, uh, uh, this is a very, very interesting and very informative presentation. I really learned a lot. Uh, I, I, I got two questions. Uh, first of all, uh, this river chief, this He Zhang, um, are these officials who are created uh, to work on a full-time basis or are they working part-time? In other words, is this additional <laughs> responsibility added uh -huh. upon uh, existing official? That is my first question. Uh, the second question is, uh, we all understand that in China, that there is already a, a national uh, water governance system uh, established by the central authority. So for example, for the Yangtze River, you have the Yangtze River Management Commission, very powerful organization. For the Yellow River, you have the similar uh, uh, Yellow River Management Commission. Likewise, in the Pearl River, uh, you know, when I was a student uh, in, in, in Guangdong, 
uh, many of my uh, fellow uh, students, my colleagues, they, they, they kept on telling me how powerful the, uh, uh, the uh, Pearl River Management Commission is. So my question is that, uh, 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 how, how is this new system of, uh, uh, of water chip uh, feed into the existing uh, water governance system that, that has already been established by the central authority uh, and, and that actually, you know, if you're looking at this uh, 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 Yellow River, Yangtze River, Pearl River uh, Management Commission, they, they have a guarantee budget uh, on an annual basis. They're actually very powerful. So, so my question is, uh, 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 to what extent and in what manner this river chief system uh, is incorporated into the existing water governance system? Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Great. That's great. That's a typical George Ling's question. Wonderful. <laughs> well, make me think it good. First question, uh, the river chief is a full-time job, additional obligation. You are the party secretary of uh, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Huizhou. You are also a river chief of the rivers in Huizhou's jurisdiction area. So that's your job. However, as a full-time job, the river chief has official no time to handle the issues. His or her job is to make the river chief assistant working for them. And therefore there's a river chief office handle the issue. But a river chief is important when make the relevant department, meaning you have to do that. You have to make every, all the department working together, fix the problem. He or she is absolutely should be there, push this further. So it's additional obligation and no excuse. So this is the burden, like, you know, COVID-19, you are the number one, you have to be responsible for the whole thing. Now it's the river chief, the whole section of river in your jurisdiction area, including Hu lakes, called He Hu Zhang, river or lake chief. Uh, that's the number one question. Number two, a question, about this uh, 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 basin or uh, catchment, including Yangtze River Conservation Committee, uh, uh, a committee or commission committee, uh, Yellow River, you know, we visit all these uh, committee, you know, it's very powerful, yes. They are the existing quite interesting. They, they try, they manage the river across the jurisdiction area. It's not a province, but across the border. They look at the catchment, Yangtze River Basin, Yellow River Basin, uh, for the Yellow River, uh, catchment uh, conservation committee is look at water allocation because of irrigation conflict with the, you know, Huang He Duan Liu, et cetera, et cetera, for the Yang Yangtze River, again, pollution, et cetera, et cetera. However, they are the existing water governance body. They look after cross-border issue, but they fail to, they cannot reach the bottle level. The, 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 the polluter, the illegal miner, they can do nothing. Uh, uh, to get the thing done. So only the local river, 1 million people everywhere, it's the river chief, you are responsible. So make them as a like a river police to check what's going on. Uh, that's, I think it's the, it's the uh, additional mechanism uh, uh, because the existing government body failed to reach the, you know, three red lights, very difficult to reach need the local cooperation. The local do nothing. You won't get the three red light water, uh, water resource target realized. Uh, so that's why they try to do this. But how much, again, how much this river chief can do more effectively get the, uh, the, the three red light that include total usage, uh, efficiency, pollution control. And uh, that's really uh, uh, some question we need to think about, yeah. Thank you for that question. That's a good question. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Excuse me. Can I? Uh, yes, ask a please. please. Yeah. Uh, my name is Gavin Coates from the Division of Landscape Architecture, and I, I'm I'm interested in uh, in the issue of the catchment areas for the river because it's one thing, uh, I, and I'm, it's great that that was mentioned. Um, but do do the river chiefs have the uh, opportunity or the ability to invest in the catchments, for example, in forestry or in uh, landscape restoration schemes? Uh, is that something that is included in all of this? Uh, and I also have a, <clears throat> a more general question, which is uh, 
um, uh, the snow, the snow cap of the Himalayas, of course, feeds a lot of the major rivers, in, especially in southern China. Is that something that drives um, China's uh, concern about climate change? Thank you. Great. Your first question about this, whether the, the river chief uh, take this opportunity to invest in this uh, like a forestry or other area, which is related to my uh, second point about the the river chief should have a knowledge about catchment, the opportunity to doing some good. But so far, river chief are only, they are forced to look after the pollution, water use total, you know, things, illegal mine, sand mining, keep them busy, 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 already, you know, big pressure. For this sort of opportunity, develop opportunity is something I wish for, because this is catchment wide management. It's a brilliant opportunity. If you are the local number one official in China, you are the king, you are the king of this, your kingdom, you can make a thing happen. But if you know the catchment, know that, oh, there's a forest area, so make your river catchment wide issue, resources, ecological system, working for the tourists, stuff, you know, related to the, the you know, the regional development, that would be brilliant. It's my wish, but uh, I don't think they get that point. That's my first answer. Secondly, is the snow melting for uh, its sources for so many rivers, uh, which including some of the river flow to the India, other uh, Southeast and Asian country. And you know, China's building a proposal or already built some dams for the power generation, uh, generate a sort of uh, debate, a conflict with the uh, downstream uh, countries, or the proposed the red flag, red, red flag river, Hong uh, proposals about divert 20% of water from four international river from the Tibet plateau, gravity flow all the way to Xinjiang and to the uh, Yan'an, and you know, all that stuff. That's a, just a proposal, not official. Again, general law in, uh, debate. So the Tibet plateau is important for the uh, uh, snow melting stuff. I don't think our study about the Yangtze River, which is a previous project based on my colleagues calculation, because of the water from the sources area, from the river source, like a Yangtze River, actually is very small proportion. Yangtze River catchment water largely is from the middle, middle reach of Yangtze River, uh, which is because of the, you know, the rain pattern, the precipitation, the rain pattern, the Mengshu pattern, make Yangtze River absorb the water, get water from middle reach of yellow Yangtze River, not the up reach, not much. So the upstream lower or higher about the snow melting issue, is an issue, but only one or two percent of downstream of total water value. So it's a minor issue. Associated with that issue, also related to the water diversion, say 60 million or 60 billion or whatever water diverted from the Yangtze River uh, to the North China, South North River diversion, also raised the question how much water actually taking from the Yangtze River? Only two or three percent. So it's not big impact on the, really the downstream, the Yangtze River Delta or the river Yangtze, Shanghai, the water, sea water intrusion, that's very minimal. Uh, so that's because of nature of the river. So the snow issue is an issue, climate change, but I think the more challenge issue is the, the uh, lower river, lower rich Yangtze River and the lower rich Yellow River. Uh, management issues. Uh, uh, there are several issues. Uh, that, you know, it's complicated, but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, do we have any further questions from the audience? I can ask a yes, question. Then, then, please. Hi, Mark. Um, good to see you again. Um, I wanted to ask about the illegal sand mining. Where is that? Uh, where is that sand being used? Because it would be an interesting situation if it was being used for um, to make solar panels, because of course the transition to renewable energy is meant to be done to reduce our environmental impacts. So it's be an interesting situation if it was causing these other environmental impacts uh, to occur. 
I, I'm really happy to see you, you know. <laughs> Uh, in a while. Yeah, see you for a while. Yeah, yeah. Since you left the department, and I know you are in Hong Kong doing well. I heard a lot of story about you, but really nice to see you here. Yeah, yeah great to see uh, you. Uh, yeah. Sand mining, uh, uh, and particularly illegal uh, sand mining, is very popular, and the central government puts a lot to stop the sand mining because it would destroy the, the channel, the river, river as a you know natural system, you know. And uh, they, uh, I guess that most that they used for construction could be your geography building, maybe your building built by the sand from a, you know, Pearl River illegal sand mining, quite, quite popular, po possible. So um, I guess it's a very, very easy money and, and, and but, but previously nobody cared, a local authority, nobody paid attention to, you know, people, get some sand from a river, get a reach, pay the local, uh, uh, local village officials, say, shut up, you know, bribery or whatever. But uh, since the Hezhong, you know, the river chief system introduction, illegal sand mining clearly list at the top one of the 10, you know, that's the Sui Sutio, the 10 water ten plan is included. So the release, uh, I think largely, uh, I would say largely uh, uh, stop this illegal sand mining in China, I would say. Right, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, uh, I got a question in the chat box and uh, from Samson. Um, uh, thank you very much, Professor Wong for the presentation. And uh, uh, he would like to know more about the future of the river chip system Will it be continued to run and implement in other part of the country? Uh, thank you for again for that question. Um, first, uh, second question, I would say already implemented nationwide. So River Chief System started 2016, finished 2017. Uh, now just add more stuff to the River Chief Office or try to do something new. But already, already nationwide, everybody, we're talking about 1 million river chiefs here, uh, and that's the official. So the system already there. Uh, so it's not, not other, part of China, other part of country everywhere. I would say including Tibet, Plato, uh, and, and that's true. Uh, what do you know about the future? I would say the river chief said, based on my current understanding and I try to follow what's going on, even I cannot visit China physically, but I uh, frequently try to uh, follow the river chief development. My understanding is that those under current system, the river chief are active, they have to do something. They try to do everything possible to get the river problem fixed use the authority, hire and Ningjie, uh, Hezhong, whatever. I think if central government puts this further, this system, there is opportunity for better system to be established, okay? And if the, uh, my second concern is the river chief know the river better, which is a, one of my proposal for Australia, China, improve their relationship by introduce the dialogue between Australia's river manager and the Chinese river chief. I have that a proposal, but I haven't got a funding yet. I think Australia manager systems, river manager systems is wonderful. Chinese river chief system is unique. These two group need a dialogue discussion. So if they can learn something from Australia river manager system, I think Chinese river chief system I think it's ready for something new, willing to take some new evidence, uh, uh, you know, uh, make the system work better. Uh, but a fundamental issue is, all by the end of the day, it's make the local top local official responsible for the local issue. Um, I think it need a system like a governance by law introduced. I think I've observed the Melbourne, Victoria water river issues. I don't think any of our, uh, you know, our official politician to, to be the responsible for river. I think the system is different. Can China also gradually introduce the system, the, 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 the mechanism using the law, use the regulation rather than depend on individual person, uh, top, top official to manage the river. That translation, that's, I don't know how long, how, that's a difficult question. 
Um, thank you. And I totally agree with you, Professor Wong, that you know, now uh, we try to emphasize the responsibility, who is responsibility for environmental management uh, with regard to the river as a key <laughs> um, natural resource. And also um, you have us to know um, not only a Marco overview of uh, river of water governance in China, but also the macro management unit. <laughs> and um, it's very, um, very, very informative and interesting. And uh, let me see whether we have further questions. Um, we still have time for one or two additional questions. Uh, if no questions, um, and I'd like to thank you very much uh, for your wonderful presentations. And I really hope that after the pandemic, we can have more physical interactions and, uh, <laughs> and you're very welcome to uh, visit Hong Kong U. And uh, Professor Fong, do you have any, do you, do, would you like to say a few words? Um, no, I think you already covered very much. And once again, thank you, uh, Mark, for the wonderful presentation. I think our colleagues and our students learn a lot from what you discussed. As uh, Wendy hopes, I think uh, when the pandemic is over, I, hopefully we can develop um, more um, discussion and even for, um, possible collaboration with the center. Yeah, I can I can I can add from the from the department that uh, because uh, Professor Wong is a geographer and uh, University of Melbourne is also uh, one of a, a very prestigious university from Australia that we we would like to benchmark uh, against. Bang, you will be pleased to learn that. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, we, we very much hope that we will be able to uh, strengthen our collaboration. And as uh, 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 Dr. Wendy Cheng just mentioned and Professor Eric Fong just mentioned, we hope that after the pandemic has run out of its steam, we will invite uh, Professor Wong to come to visit Hong Kong uh, and we can sit down and, and, and talk in person about how we could further our collaboration. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I remember you took me to your professor canteen. I very impressive. I like your university canteen. It's a wonderful place. Yes. Uh, I'm looking forward to see you in person in Hong Kong, and, and definitely the long time. You know, uh, Hong Kong is a place I have to go. I really want to go. And then, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank and you, you know, our people. canteen is recently renovated. That's right. <laughs> yeah. oh my God. So a new image waiting Even better. for you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, thank you for the audience. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, and that's the first um, public lecture um, hosted by the um, China cluster. Um, so um, I hope that um, more will come in the future. And please stay tuned. <laughs> and bye bye. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Thank you. Nice to see so many people. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye.